السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Math Grade 6. We are in Chapter 11, Lesson 1, Statistical Measures. Today we want to learn the first statistical measures, the mean, the mean. Before we start in our lesson, I want to go to the ALEF program. This is our lesson today. This is the dashboard of the ALEF. The name of our lesson is the mean. So today, after you finish your schedule, you can go to the, your account in ALEF program. At the first, go to the big idea to see the videos. Statistics is a branch of mathematics that is used to collect, summarize, and present data. It is useful when using data from test scores and sporting events. For instance, Mohammed scored 15, 9, 12, and 20 points in his last four games. We can find the mean or average of his scores by adding them together and dividing by the number of games he played. The mean will give us an idea of how many points Muhammad is likely to score at each game. 15 plus 9 plus 12 plus 20 equals 56. 56 divided by 4 equals 14 points per game. Today, you will learn how to find the mean of a set of data. The math teacher asked six students to see how many apples each one eats per week. By the end of the week, they will find the average of apples eaten. The results are shown in the pictograph. Ahmad ate four apples. Rashid ate two apples. Yusuf ate two apples. Khalifa ate four apples. Ferris ate three apples. Samir ate three apples. To find the mean, first list the numbers in the data set. Next, use the formula of the mean. The mean is equal to the sum of numbers S in the data set over the number of values in the data set. Now, Let's substitute the values in the formula and simplify. The sum of the values is 18, and the number of values is 6. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So the mean number of apples eaten by the chosen students for the week is 3. Let us take another example. A basketball coach is recording the scores of his team for the first quarter. The record is shown on the dot plot the coach is using this data to find the average score per player in the first quarter. First, list the set of values in the data set. Next, apply the formula of the mean. The mean is equal to the sum of numbers in the data set over the number of values. Now substitute the values in the formula and simplify. The sum of the values is 52 and the number of values is 11. So the mean is approximately 4.7. The mean number of points scored by each player for the first quarter is approximately 4.7 when rounded to the nearest tenth. Great job! After you see the videos, you will reach to the explore. Here we have four examples. Um, we have many questions here. For example, here question one, here we have this table. You can see the table and then and read the information inside this table. For example, here Sunday, we have four, Monday we have two, uh, Tuesday we have here six, here, uh, Wednesday three, uh, Thursday here we have Five. The total, the total ten. The total, for example, ten. And the question here, the pictograph shown displays how many ice cream sold from Sunday to Thursday. Find the mean of ice cream sold. To find the mean, as you see, 
we can add, we can add, we can sum the total, divide, divide by the numbers of day, the numbers of day. So is it the answer 50 or 100 or 200 or 40? The right answer will be what? Will be 40, will be 40. And here, the second example, here, the third example, this is a uh, dot plot, uh, number line. <coughs> so, after you finish your schedule today, you can go uh, inside your account in Elif program and you can uh, see uh, these videos, then start to solve, start to solve the exercises. Here you have the explore, then here you have apply, relate, the last look, then at the last we have my exit ticket. Uh, solve, be careful. You must Repeat please. هون في عنا حساب علي فست خلص اليوم برنامجك اليومي رح تلاقي عندك الدرس المين. طبعا هلا رح نشرحه نحنا. بس بس تخلص اليوم برنامجك اليومي تخلي على برنامج ألف طبعا قبل الساعة أربعة العصر على برنامج مين أول شيء بتدخلي على البيج ايديا بتحاولي تشوفي الفيديوهات بعدين بتدخلي على الاكسبلور بيطلعوا لك هنا ورا بعض بيطلعوا ورا بعض بالترتيب بتدخلي على الاكسبلور بعدين على الابلاي بعدين على الريليت بعدين على اللاست لوك آخر شيء بتجيكي شو ماي اكزيت تيكت بس وقت تحلي حلي خطوة خطوة وبحرص عشان تحصلي علامة كويسة بس هذا المطلوب منك طيب نرجع على درسنا نحن مستر يس ام دينو انه المسابقه الف موجوده بس كيف تفوز فيها يعني لازم تجمع نقاط اكثر ستارز اللي بعرفه عن مسابقه الف اول شيء اني حاطين لينك بدك تفوتي عليه تسجلي بس تسجلي هي بيعرضوا عليك اسئله بيجيك تصير بيجيك اسئله بس تحليها هي طبعا لا مو بس للطالب حتى لوي الامر بيجا بيجيبوا بيعرضوا عليك اسئله بشكل يومي فبتجاوبي عليها انت والفائز بيوزعوا عليه جوائز بالشكل هذا اوكي وين اللينك والله اللينك هنا باعتين فيديو كانوا شوف لك يا انا اذا لقيته ببعث لكم اياه على جروب ان شاء الله موجود بضمن الفيديو اللي بعت لكم بعد يعني مستر شو قاعده برنامج الف شو يفيدنا برنامج الف هو من البرنامج الرياضيات الحديثه المطبقه في وزاره التربيه تقريبا من سنتين و جاي وهو من البرامج اللي بتساهم بتخلي الطالب يعني عنده قدرة عالية في التعلم الذاتي بدون معلم أو مثل ما شايفين إنه بيعرض فيديو بالأول بيشرح للطالب بعدين الطالب يفوت بيحل نحن عم نستفيد منه إنه بيخدم دروسنا لأنه نفس المنهج طبعا هو مطبق في مدارس الوزارة نحن ندرس المنهج المايكرو هي اللي هو نفسه موجود في الوزارة بس الخلاف بيننا وبينهم هو الترتيب يعني نحن في دروس بناخذها بالترم الثاني اللي بياخذوها بالترم الثالث وبالعكس فنحن بننقي الدروس المشابهه لنا وبيفيدنا نحن انه بعد ما ناخذ درسنا نروح نطبق عليه نطبق عليه عمليا يعني هو اول شيء بيساعدنا في تنميه التكنولوجيا عندنا صار ضروري نحلهم في تنميه المهاره طبعا ضروري نحن قلنا انه ضروري لامرين الامر الاول انه متابعه من قبل الوزاره يعني اي طالب ما عم يحل ما عم يشتغل الوزاره بده يجي مسائله من الوزاره الموضوع الثاني انه انه نحن نحط ع... راح نحط علامه الفصل عليه علامه الفصل من 20 يعني كل طالب عم يشتغل بالف على حسب جهده على حسب عمله راح نحط له علامه من 20 اما اللي ما عم يشتغل راح يفقد هال20 علامه هي راح تصير علامته مثل ما قلنا من 80 فضروري جدا بشكل يومي ما بياخذ منك 10 دقائق هو بس خلصتي الجدول تبعك يعني انتم اليوم عم تخلصوا اخر حصه على الساعه 2 الا ربع ممكن تتاحي لك ربع ساعه بتدخلي يعني ممكن إذا بلشتي الساعة تنتين تنتين وربع تنتين وعشرين دقيقة تكوني خالصة من حل الدرس وهو تدريب مثل ما قلنا تدريب ومراجعة على الدرس أوكي okay. طيب today إن شاء الله we will start in chapter 11 statistical measures the first lesson the mean the mean so see with me now this video to know what's the meaning of our lesson today Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to begin a very interesting topic. Today we're talking about an introduction to statistics. Let's get started. For 
the introduction to statistics, let's first define what exactly statistics is. So statistics is the science of collecting, organizing, analyzing, and interpreting data. It's all about data. Well, first you gotta collect data. Data just doesn't appear, you gotta collect it somehow. Maybe you do a survey and get data that way. Maybe you perform some experiments and you measure and record data as you go along. Once you have the data, well then what do you do with it? Well, we organize it. Put it in order maybe from least to greatest. That's a common thing to do at the start. Uh, maybe you'll put them in a table. Maybe you'll make a graph. Uh, well, then you analyze it. What is the data telling us? We do things like find the mean, median, mode, or range uh, to kind of get a sense of what the data is all about. And then we interpret that data. What does it tell us? Now that we know and have all this data and have tried to analyze it somehow, how does that help answer whatever questions we were looking for answers for, okay? That's what statistics is all about. It's all about collecting that data and using it to help answer a question. So statistics is all about answering a question. Well, first, what exactly is a good statistical question? Well, a statistical question is where you expect to get a variety of answers. That's, that's really big. Uh, a variety of answers, a whole range of answers. You're not expecting just a couple different options, right? Uh, and you are interested in the distribution and tendency of those answers. Now, one more thing I wanna add about statistical questions. Don't get confused from a survey question and a statistical question. For example, if your statistical question was, uh, how much do sixth graders weigh? Well, that's your statistical question. But when you do the survey, you're not gonna ask people, how much do sixth graders weigh? You're gonna say, how much do you weigh? And you go to the next person, how much do you weigh? And all the sixth graders you're gonna survey, you ask them, how much do you weigh? That would not be a statistical question, but it's gonna help us get data to answer the statistical question. So with that, let's get to our first example. Okay, example one, let's say your science teacher asked you to do an experiment about mice. And she asks, what is the weight of a mouse? Okay. Well, first, is this a statistical question? And if so, explain. Now, if you remember from the definition, statistical questions should be giving us a variety of answers. Uh, they should be able to show us the distribution uh, and a tendency. So we have to think, well, this question, if I'm doing an experiment with mice, is it gonna give me a variety of answers? And the answer is yes, it will because you can't expect all mice to weigh the same. They're gonna be different, just like humans are gonna weigh different amounts, same with mice. So our answer, yes, because you would expect the weight of mice to vary. Let's try part B. Okay, part B. So we weighed a whole bunch of mice and we collected uh, that data and have it in this little table over here. Now what we're gonna do is display that data in a dot plot. So it looks kind of confusing. It's hard to tell anything about the data, right? We've already done that first step, collecting the data. Now we're gonna organize it uh, and we're gonna make a, uh, a dot plot. Uh, and then after the dot plot's made, identify any clusters, peaks, or gaps. And we'll talk about what those mean in a second. But first, the dot plot. A dot plot is basically, you have a number line. Uh, it could be horizontal or vertical. And then you use dots to show the where the different data values are. It's kind of like a little bit like a bar graph, except with dots instead of bars. Um, so we're going to start with a number line. Well, if I look at my data, I can see that uh, the least value is 18, uh, 18 grams, and the greatest was 28 grams. So that's where I'm going to start on my uh, dot plot. Okay, so I have my, my number line done uh, for my dot plot all the way from 18 to 28. I need to label what these values mean. So these were all weights. So I'm going to label that over here to the side. Weight, and that was in grams. Really important to label. Don't forget that or else nobody's going to know what those values represent. Uh, and then we just look at the data and, and put dots. So at 18, how many mice weighed 18 grams. Well, if I look at my data, I can count two. So I put one, two. 
just two dots right above that number 18. And I keep going. So 19, if I look, there were three. So I'm going to do one, two, three, like that. And we'll keep going. Um, at this point, you'll notice there were no 24s, no 25s, no 26s. So I'm going to put nothing there. Uh, and then I get to 27 and keep going. So there are two of those. And then finally, 128. Um, one good thing to do before you're finished is just double check uh, to make sure you counted all of the, the data values. So just count your dots and make sure it matches uh, the values over there. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20. And if I look at uh, that little chart, I have 20 values there. So I'm happy with that. Now, that plot is done. Let's go to the next part. Identify any clusters, peaks, or gaps. Well, let's look at the clusters. First, a cluster is where a lot of data values are kind of bunched together. So if you look over here, you'll notice, well, it looks like there's a whole bunch of data values right there. You're, you're just going to pick kind of what's in the middle where they're kind of all seem to kind of be drawn to. So that would be 20. Uh, so that's a cluster. You might be asking, is it possible to have two clusters? Sure. If you've got a big bunch here and another big bunch here, it's possible to have more than one cluster. That's okay. Uh, peaks. Well, hopefully you can kind of guess what that is. That's just, are there any things where it's the tallest? So right here, again, 20, there is a peak at 20. And same thing, it's possible to have more than one peak. If, for example, 21 also went up to 6, then we would say there's a peak at 20 and 21. But as of right now, there's only one peak because that is the tallest. Uh, and finally, gaps. Hopefully that's obvious, again, what that is, uh, where there's spaces in between the data values and that obviously is right here. Uh, so there is a gap between 23 and 27. Okay. So that's just kind of helping to uh, explain our data a little bit more. Okay, and finally part C, use a distribution to answer what is the weight of a mouse, our original statistical question. Well, Looking at that data, looking at our dot plot and seeing those clusters and the peaks, we can say that most mice weigh about 20 grams, right? Our cluster was around 20, our peak was at 20, uh, so that's how we would answer that question. Here's one to try on your own. All right, example two, the dot plot shows the heights of sixth graders in my math class. So here is the dot plot. You can see uh, these are all heights in centimeters, not inches. Um, and part A says, how many students are in my class? Well, if you remember, all of these dots represent a data value. So in this case, these dots represent one student's height. So to figure out how many students, I just count the dots. So let's see, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So there are 22 students in my class. Okay, let's try part B. Okay, part B, how can you collect these data? Well, to figure out heights, we're probably going to use a measuring tape, right? And make sure that you're measuring in centimeters, right? because that's what the data was. Let's try part C. Okay, finally part C, write a statistical question you can answer using the dot plot and then answer that question. So we're writing a statistical question. Uh, it has to be about the dot plot. Uh, remember this was about height uh, of students in my class. So maybe our question could be, how tall are sixth graders in Mr. Jacobson's math class? That is a question that we could answer using this dot plot. So that's great. There's our statistical question, and let's answer it. Well, how tall are most sixth graders in my math class? If you look, uh, we have two peaks right here. There's 56 and 57. By the way, you may have noticed I didn't label every single um, every single dash. 
Uh, but if you notice, I'm going by the same amount. So 152, that would be 153, 154, 55, 56, 157, 158. That's fine. You can do it that way. Just be consistent. Um, so we've got a peak peaks here at 156 and 157. Uh, that's also kind of where we have a cluster. So we would say um, most of the students are what about 156 centimeters probably are about 156 centimeters tall hopefully you can see all of that uh that's it for example two here's one to try on your own as always thank you so much for watching and if you like this video please subscribe This is introduction to the statistical measures. So today we want to learn the first statistical uh, measures, the mean, the mean. So <clears throat> today we want to learn how to find the mean or average. Mean or average, the same idea, the same idea, the same word for, for the same idea. See with me now this video. is called mean one. So the first data set, I have two, another two, a four, and a four. And then in the other data set, I have a one, I'm gonna do this on the right side of the screen, a one, a one, a six, and a four. Now, the first thing I wanna think about is, well, how do I, is there a number that can give me a, a measure of, of a, a, a measure of center of each of these data sets? And one of the ways that we know how to do that is by finding the mean. So let's figure out the mean of each of these data sets. So this first data set, the mean, well, we just need to sum up all of the numbers. So it's gonna be two plus two plus four plus four, and then we're gonna divide by the number of numbers that we have. So we have one, two, three, four numbers. So that's that four right over there. And this is going to be two plus two is four, plus four is eight, plus four is 12. So it's gonna be 12 over four, which is equal, which is equal to three. So actually, let's just, let's see if we can visualize this a little bit on a number line. So, so, and actually I'll do kind of a, I'll do a little bit of a dot plot here so we can see all of the values. So, if this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And so we have two twos. And so why don't I just do, so for each of these twos, actually, I'll just do it in yellow. So I have one two, and then I'll have another two. I'm just going to do a dot plot here. And then I have two fours. So one four and another four right over there. And we calculated that the mean is three. The mean is three. A measure of central tendency, it is three. So I'll just put three right over here. I'll just mark it with that dotted line. And that's where the mean is. All right, well, we've visualized that a little bit, and that does look like it's the center. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty, it, it, it makes sense. So now let's look at this other data set right over here. So the mean, the mean over here is going to be equal to one plus one plus six plus four all of that over, we still have four data points. And this is two plus six is eight, plus four is 12. 12 divided by four, this is also three. So this also has the same mean. We have different numbers, but we have the same mean. But there's something about this data set that feels a little bit different about this. And let's, let's visualize it to see if we can see a difference. Let's see if we can visualize it. So now I have to go all the way up to six. So let's say this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll go one more, seven. So we have a one, we have a one, we have another one, we have a six, and then we have a four. And we calculated that the mean is three. So we calculated that the mean is three. So the mean is three. 
So when we measure it by the mean, the central point or measure of that central point, which we use as the mean, well, it looks the same, but the data sets look different. And how do they look different? Well, we've talked about notions of variability or variation, and it looks like this data set is more spread out. It looks like the data points are more, on average further away from the mean than these data points are. And so that's an interesting question that we ask ourselves in statistics. We just don't want a, a measure of center, like the mean. We might also want a measure of variability. And one of the more straightforward ways to think about variability is, well, on average, how far are each of the data points from the mean? And we're gonna, that might sound a little complicated, but we're going we're gonna to figure out what that means in a second, and not, not, not to overuse the word mean. So we want to figure out, on average, how far are each of these data points from the mean. And what we're about to calculate, this is called mean absolute deviation. Absolute deviation. Mean absolute deviation, or if you just use the acronym MAD, MAD, for mean absolute deviation. And all we're talking about, we're going to figure out how much do each of these points, their distance, so absolute deviation, how much do they deviate from the mean, but the absolute of it, so each of these points at two, they are one away from the mean, doesn't matter if they're less or more, they're one away from the mean, and then we find the mean of all of the deviations. So what does that mean? <laughs> I'm using the word mean, well, using it a little bit too much. So let's figure out the mean absolute deviation of this first data set. So we've been able to figure out what the mean is. The mean is three. So we take each of the data points and we figure out what's its absolute deviation from the mean. So we take the first two. So we say two minus the mean. Two minus the mean, and we take the absolute value. So that's its absolute deviation. Then we have another two. So we find that's absolute deviation from three. Remember, if we're just taking two minus three and taking the absolute value, that's just saying it's absolute deviation. How far is it from three? It's, it's fairly easy to calculate in this case. Then we have a four and another four. So let me write that. So then we have the mean, or we have the absolute deviation of four from three, from, its, from the mean, and then plus we have another four. We have this other four right up here, four, minus three, we take the absolute value because once again, it's absolute deviation, and then we divide it, and then we divide it by the number of data points we have. So what is this going to be? Two minus three is negative one, but we take the absolute value, it's just going to be one. Two minus three is negative one, we take the absolute value, and it's just going to be one. And you see that here visually, this point is just one away. It's just one away from three. This point is just one away from three. Four minus three is one, absolute value of that is one. This point is just one away from three. Four minus three, absolute value, that's another one. So you see in this case, every, every data point was exactly one away from the mean. And we took the absolute value so that we don't have negative ones here. We just care how far it is in absolute, in absolute terms. So you have four data points. Each of their absolute deviations is four away. So the mean of the absolute deviations are one plus one plus one plus one, which is four over four, so it's equal to one. So one way to think about it, it's saying, on average, the mean of the distances of these points away from the actual mean is one. And that makes sense because all of these are exactly one away from the mean. Now let's see how, how what results we get for this data set right over here. And I'll do it, let me actually get some space over here. At any point, if you get inspired, I encourage you to calculate the mean absolute deviation on your own. So let's calculate it. So the mean absolute devi deviation here, I'll write MAD, is going to be equal to, well, let's look, figure out the absolute deviation of each of these points from the mean. So it's the absolute value of one minus three, that's this first one, plus the absolute deviation, so one minus three, that's the second one, and then plus the absolute value of six minus three, that's the six, and then we have the four, plus the absolute value of four minus three, and then we have four points, so one minus three is negative two, absolute value is two, and we see that here. This is two away from three. We just care about absolute deviation. We don't care if it's to the left or to the right. Then we have another one minus three is negative two, but it's absolute value, so this is two. And that's this, this is two away from the mean. Then we have six minus three, absolute value of that's just going to be three. And that's this right over here, we see this six is three to the right of the mean. We don't care whether it's to the right or the left. And then four minus three, 
4 minus 3 is 1, absolute value is 1. And we see that. It is 1 to the right of 3. And so what do we have? We have 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7, plus 1 is 8 over 4, which is equal to 2. So the mean absolute deviation, let me write it down, it fell off over here. Here for this data set, the mean absolute deviation is equal to 2, while for this data set, the mean absolute deviation is equal to 1. And that makes sense. They have the exact same means. They both have a mean of 3, but this one is more spread out. The one on the right is more spread out because on average, each of these points are 2 away from 3, while on average, each of these points are 1 away from 3. The means of the absolute deviations on this one is 1. The means of the absolute deviations on this one is 2. So the green one is more spread out from the mean. So, so the mean of data set is the sum, the sum of the data divided by the number of pieces of data. This is the rule to solve the mean. This is the rule to solve the mean. It is the balance point for the data set. When I say the average, the average, the same, the same idea for the mean. Here we have the different word, but the same idea. Average means the mean. Summarizes the data using the single number. For example, <clears throat> here you have example one. The table shows the number of CDs. Find the mean number of CDs. In this table, we have here number of CDs. We have one, two, three, four, five, six groups. The first group has one CD. The second group has two CDs. Here, three CDs, four CDs, five CDs, six CDs. How to find the mean? How to find them? So the rule set, the rule set, add the all elements in the groups inside the table, then divide by the number of the data set. So we can add one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. Then how many groups I have inside the table here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So right here, six. Now you can add here one plus two, three plus three, six plus four, ten plus five, fifteen, fifteen plus six will be twenty-one. Over six, twenty-one divided by six, twenty-one divided by six equal three point five. Equal three point five. So the mean here for this example equal three point five. The second example. The dot plot. This is the name of number line. The name of this number line dot plot shows the recorded high temperature for six days. Find the mean temperature. As you see here in the picture, this number line, this number line, the dot plot, the dot, the name of this number line, the dot plot. As you see, here, we have 28, 30, 32, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70. This is the temperature, the temperatures for many days. We take just for six days, just for the uh, six day. Here we have the two days we have the temperature here 30. So put here two dot means two days, two days we have 30. One day 40, one day 40, the temperature 40. Three days 50, three days 50. How to solve, how to solve the mean? So the rule, the mean equal the sum of the numbers divided by the number of set of data. So here, how many 30 we have here? Here we have 230. Here we have 230 because here we have two dots. 
So I can write 30 plus 30. Here, how many 40 we have? Just one. So we can have, we can write plus 40. Plus, how many 50 I have here? One, two, three. So I can write three 50s here. One, two, three. Plus 50, plus 50, plus 50. What is the total number? One, two, three, four, five, six. So divided by six. Divided by six. Now I can add here 30 plus, plus 30, 60, plus 40, 100, 150, 200, 250. So I can write here 250 divided by 6, divided by 6, approximately equal 41.66. So this is the two examples to know how to solve, how to solve the mean. So th this is our lesson today. See with me now this video. Hello, this is Mrs. Hyman. School. The scores for five of Danielle's math tests are 88, 92, 75, 84, and 91. Suppose that she cannot find the score for her sixth test, but she knows that the mean of the six tests is 85. What was the score of Danielle's missing test? Well, we have a couple pieces of information to use here. We know that for five of her tests, these are the scores, 88, 92, 75, 84, and 91. And there were a total of six tests. We also know that the mean of those six tests is 85. And then our question, What's the score on the missing test? So if we know that the mean for six tests is 85, that would mean that kind of working backwards from finding a mean, we could take 85, the mean, and multiply it times the six tests to get our total. So 85, times 6, and that gives us 510. And then we can subtract out those five test scores that we know, and then that will leave us with what her sixth test score should be. So we're going to take 510, and we're going to, we're going to subtract from that all of the other five test scores. So that's 88 plus 92 plus 75, plus 84, and the last one is 91. Okay, so we have 510. And if we add these all together here, we get 430. 510 minus 430 gives us 80. So that means that Danielle's missing score would have to be an 80 on that sixth test. So this is our lesson today. This is our lesson today. Who has a question now? Who has a question? No one. Is that, do yes. we should like find the set of data for the stem and the leaf? Uh, raise your voice and repeat your question, please. I say that we should um, get set of data for the steam and the leaf because an elf it is here. We should answer the questions of it. When you, when you want to solve the mean, uh, at the first, add add the all numbers in the table or in the uh, dot plot. Then divide by the number of the set of data. The number of the set of the data. For example, uh, we have six days. I take the temperature in each day, so I have uh, six uh, six number number of temperatures. So I to to solve the mean, I can add the all numbers. Then how many numbers I have? Six days divided by the six divided by the six. The answer here, the name of the answer here, the mean of the temperature, the mean of the temperature. So our lesson today 
uh, we are in chapter 11 lesson one statistical measures the first statistical measures they mean they mean so we learn today they mean who has a question it's clear for all clear for all clear oh. yeah let us take it now <clears throat> Mister, but uh, in Aleph, I find a question that it say uh, like find the set, find the data, find the mean of data for the stem and the leaf. Yes. And when you want to find the data, uh, suppose we have a, a table or we have dot block. So if you have table, uh, look to the numbers inside the table. You can add the all numbers inside the table, then count how many numbers do you have, then divide the sum over the numbers. You will find the mean. And the second example, if you have the dot plot inside the number line, uh, go to the each number and count the, the dot. Count the dot. For example, 30 have two dots, 40 have three dots, like, like this. So you can now add the number of dots then count about the number of the set of data inside the number line. You will find the mean. You will find the mean. Okay. Mr. Is it here? Yes, Mr. Yes. Yes, you can. Now we are in week eight. Eliazia here. Yes, uh, Beka here. Beka. Beka absent. Okay, Rauda. Rauda. Yes. Yes. Sarah. Sarah. Where is Sarah? Absent Sarah? Selma? Here. Great. Aisha? Here. Where? Yes, great. Uh, Fatima? Fatima? Yes. Layan? Yes. Great. Uh, Beka? Where is Beka? Sarah? Okay, thank you. So this is our lesson today. This is our lesson today. How to find, how to find the mean, the first measure in the statistical measures. Thank you for your listening. Have a nice day. See you tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.